So hello everyone out there. It's I, Phil Smith, once again giving you a vlog of 2010, the top 10 things that I loved about 2010. Now, in the past, some of the things that have been on these lists have been um, an event that I went to, a celebrity I met, something I bought, or even a food that I had never tasted before and then became a uh, new favorite of mine. Well, that's kind of what this list is all about. Once again, there's going to be some surprises in there, I'm sure, for you, some of you who have read my top 10 lists of the year in the past. But um, let's just get the thing going here, all right? So. I'm looking at my laptop here because I've got once again a list, not a physical paper list, but a list on the screen here just to keep track of. So number 10, favorite thing of 2010, Funyuns. Yeah, that little onion ring snack that's like a potato chip, only it's onion flavored and looks like an onion ring. I never used to eat those things. And you know something? I got heavily into them this year. I love them. They're probably my new favorite snack. And sometimes I'll buy a little, you know, 99 cent bag at a gas station. And then if they do have them, I'll buy, you know, a big old bag, you know, to just munch on. Sometimes it's just good filler, you know, it's just something to munch on. And, you know, I love them. You know, I'm sure I wouldn't, you know, eat them every single day. I've actually been trying not to eat them every single day now. And usually I think if I'm eating Funyuns, I'll usually eat them once or twice a week but bottom line is I love them they taste delicious I never thought I would enjoy them but lo and behold I pretty much became a Funyuns fan overnight and that's all I have to say about that number 10 Funyuns number nine Capriati's if you recall from my uh, top places I enjoyed eating at in 2010 I mentioned Capriati's which was a staple of downtown Wilmington Delaware now I never went to Capriati's when I lived in Delaware which you may find weird being you know that I've lived in Delaware about 23 years but I just I was never really into going downtown for them I mean I'm sure there were other stores locally in Delaware like in strip malls or something that you could go to a Capriati's but I just, I never had it in me to go until one day I just felt like going to the one that was on um, Sahara near the Strip, right near the uh, Bonanza gift shop, the world's largest gift store. And I went in there and I ordered their signature sandwich, the Bobby, which as I said to you is kind of like a Thanksgiving sub. It's shredded up turkey with some cranberry sauce, mayonnaise, and stuffing. and. Oh my god, it's just so tasty. And I, I love them. I love the Bobby. And um, when I'm hungry for a sub nowadays, I don't go to, you know, Subway or Porta Subs. Now I pretty much go to Capriati's. That's, that's my new favorite sub shop. So, number nine for top ten of 2010, Capriati's. Number eight, California trips. Now, some of you had been a little bit teased by these things in the last couple months, and I never got to really write anything about it. I've kind of gotten into the habit of no longer typing my blogs, mainly because it's a strain on my fingers. I know you probably find that hard to believe, but it's also a strain on my brain because a lot of the time I don't save my stuff midway. I usually keep typing until I'm finished and sometimes without warning my computer will have an error and it stops, it freezes, and I have to restart from scratch with nothing saved. So. To give you an idea of what I was talking about now, uh, the California trips that I took back in July and November of this year. In July, I drove to California on a Thursday night after I got done work at 7, rolled around in Anaheim right about 11 o'clock, 11.30 in the evening. I went out to meet a very good friend of mine, Shanna, and she is actually heading up this burlesque troupe for BBWs. And I'll get into that portion a little bit later, but what I'm talking about right now is the first trip that I took in July, a week after my birthday actually, a week after I came back from being back east to celebrate my birthday, um, I took a trip to California to meet up with Shanna and originally the idea was that we were going to go to Disneyland for a whole day. Unfortunately it didn't happen but we still managed to have fun. We took a trip all across the Pacific Coast Highway. I took lots of good pictures. We got to walk along uh, the beach 
and um, we took pictures there. We had lunch at a Ruby's Dinette on the end of the pier on one of the beaches. It was really, really nice. So so beautiful and some of you who have seen my Facebook have actually seen these pictures that I took a while back in July and it was just a whole day we spent an entire Friday just hanging out in California we started out having breakfast at an original pancake house just near Disneyland in Anaheim and we ended the evening with an evening show of Toy Story 3 at a local theater and it was, it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed myself, and I just don't do these things. I'm not usually Mr. Spontaneous, and to do what I did was, it, it felt good. You know, even my parents were impressed with what I did. They just, you know, were very happy that I took it upon myself to do it by myself, without worries, and I drove to California and back. And even avoided stuff, you know, at this, this time of the, that time of the season, you know, wildfires, there were no wildfires when I was there, so I had a pretty easy drive back home, and it was definitely something that I wanted to do again, which I did, which now segues into the second trip I took, which was back in November. I was very fortunate enough uh, the week before Thanksgiving to get a three-day weekend, and I took it upon myself on Saturday to drive once again to California to see my friend Shanna, this time for the premiere of her show, which I'll show you a little picture of here, uh, the Burlesque de Rubenesque, the BBW Burlesque show that she's in. There's a picture of some of the ladies there. Um, I know this is fairly reasonable for the policies here, so there's nothing too revealing. But uh, right there, that's my friend Shanna in the black there. And, you know, I'm definitely hoping to see another show of theirs. It was an awesome show. I actually got to meet all the members of their uh, cast afterwards. We all had uh, dinner at a TGI Fridays, actually in the same plaza that Shannon and I had gone to see uh, Toy Story 3. And it was a lot of fun. The girls loved me, and, you know, I'm trying to help them actually get a show out here in Vegas. Maybe even the Onyx Theater would suffice for a good performance space. So, you know, fingers crossed. But, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. My two California trips, and definitely anticipate more in the future. I know um, one place I'm really hoping to go, I'll show you a picture of this one. This is uh, something I found in the uh, hotel room of where I was staying the first time I went there. Uh, Amoeba Music. I'm hoping to check this place out next time I decide to go to California. I, I mean, the selection here, I mean, if you can see that, look at that. That's just one floor. This place is, I think, about three floors, and it takes up, like, three city blocks. So, I mean, that's... That's heaven. That really would be heaven for me if I got a chance to check this place out, Amoeba Music in um, Hollywood. So once again, I hope to do that sometime in uh, 2011, take another trip in California and, you know, see my friend Shan again and, you know, possibly another uh, burlesque de Rubenesque show. So that would be number eight, the California trips. Number seven, the Herbie slash Canada trip. Some of you may recall I was supposed to take this trip in October called the Eldorado Run with some fellow Herbie the Love Bug fans and uh, meet up with my friend Justin Duick in Canada. Well, unfortunately, due to some technical issues, Herbie didn't make it, and I spent the bulk of my time just in Canada, which was fun. I'm saying right now, it was fun. We got to see a performance of some of the guys from Whose Line Is It Anyway do a show at a local theater called Who's Live Anyway, which had um, Ryan Stiles, Chip Esten, um, a couple of the other guys, I just can't remember them all, but, um, oh, uh, Greg Proops was in there too. Uh, and Jeff B. Davis, that was it. And we just had a great time. Me and his roommate and, you know, his family welcomed me into their home with open arms. I actually got to spend, spend Thanksgiving in Canada. I was in Canada for Canadian Thanksgiving, which was great this year. I mean, I actually had three Thanksgivings this year. One in Canada and two here in Vegas. One with my parents and one with my, my friend Wendy. It was awesome. But, I mean, really, this Canada trip was so fun for me. I mean, yeah, it was cold and I got a little bit sick, but we saw a couple movies, Justin and I. We hung out with his family. I got to experience hands-on a little bit what it's like to fix a Volkswagen engine. And in fact, we put together a little video, which I'm sure you may recall, I put up on, uh, or Justin put up on YouTube that, you know, was a lot of fun that day. It was, I think, the day before I went back to Las Vegas, and I just had a lot of fun. And really, that's what it's all about, you know, 
two things I love in this world, you know, Herbie and, you know, having fun. And, you know, I have the most fun when I'm, you know, talking about Herbie or, you know, riding around in a Herbie. And really, as long as Herbie was there, that's all that mattered. And again, that would be number seven, the Herbie slash Canada trip. And a special uh, thanks to you, Justin, for uh, having a great time with me as well on that trip. I know we didn't get to experience the full El Dorado, but hey, man, we still had fun. Now, number six, Showtime original series. I don't have cable, but I worked at a place that tested shows for one of the big premium networks on cable, Showtime. I had never watched shows like this before, and when I did, I loved them because they were very much serious adult content. Nudity, profanity, violence, and enjoyable. And some of the series on Showtime that I just absolutely love are Californication, the United States of Terra, a uh, new show that we tested at uh, Television City, which is uh, airing in January, Shameless, and my favorite show on Showtime, Weeds. I absolutely love Weeds. And this is the official book in the Weeds that was put out in conjunction with the uh, first two seasons. And I, I just absolutely love it. I, I love, you know, the cast. I love the stories. I love, and great music, too. You know, the people who work on these shows on Showtime have great music taste. They must have all been in college radio like me and my friends. You know, we we love these indie bands. I mean, I've heard Sufjan Stevens. I've heard The New Pornographers. I've heard of Montreal. All of these great indie artists have been featured on Weeds and Californication, United States of Terra. And it's awesome. And the other one I forgot to mention, uh, The Big C, which is another great Showtime original series. You know, it's just so great to watch shows that are that much more real. You know, it's not, you know, oh, we can't say this because it's going to be heard by little kids. But yes, you can because you're a premium cable network that's going to air these shows after 10 o'clock at night, Monday through Friday. And... I love that kind of freedom with those kind of programs. Again, Showtime original series, love, love them. That would be my number six favorite thing of 2010. Number five, meeting Harvey Picar. Back in, I believe it was uh, April of this year, I, along with my friend Jen, got an opportunity, oh, my friend Allie got an opportunity to see Harvey Picar, the creator of, um, American Splendor at a local library here in Las Vegas and I had been waiting to meet Harvey Picar since I first saw the movie American Splendor in 2004 and on the website for the film they actually gave you this opportunity to request Harvey to come speak at a private function, a college and I requested that he come to my college, Shippensburg University, but unfortunately I never got to hear back. Luckily, from reading a pamphlet from the local libraries, I found out that Harvey was going to be showing up in Vegas. And I jumped to the chance, and I'm glad I did, because um, as many of you may know, sadly, Harvey Picar passed away this year. He actually passed away um, about a week before my birthday in July of this year. It was, it was very sad, but um, I, I still said to myself, you know, how lucky it is that I got to meet him and get his autograph there that says to Phil Harvey Picar. I've got um, a couple of these. I've got one for this book, the new American Splendor uh, anthology. I've got his autograph in this one, American Splendor, our movie year, which was put out in conjunction with the release of the film American Splendor. And um, really, it was just an honor to meet him. I got a few video clips I posted online. I got to take a picture with him. And, you know, it just it felt great to finally get to meet a guy who I had wanted to meet for so long. And, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed his work. And he left a great legacy, a great collection of graphic novels and comics. And, you know what, Harvey, thanks. Thank you. Number five, meeting Harvey Picar. Number four, the music of Queen. Now, I have a coworker who's a great friend of mine. He actually was my first real contact when I moved out here to Vegas to try and break into radio. 
by the name of Tom Reese, and he created this thing called 21st Century Audio Theater, which I got to take part in. It was basically new um, versions of the classic audio dramas, and we got to work together. He got to hear me do, you know, voices for his various radio dramas, and then we worked together at Television City. And one thing about Tom that I've always enjoyed is that he has a lot of great music tastes, a lot like my own. And he introduced me last year to the music of KISS. I had never really been a big KISS fan. This year he did one better. And Tom, if you're watching, you really did do one better. He got me into the music of Queen. I had never really been that much on Queen. The, mo the most I knew of Queen was Under Pressure, Back Chat from their album Hot Space, um, Fat Bottom Girls, Another One Bites the Dust, We Are the Champions, We Will Rock You, Bohemian Rhapsody. And um, I just really had never listened to any full Queen albums. And he got me hooked. He really did. I love the music of Queen. In fact, I mean, my favorite song is Somebody Love. I absolutely love Somebody to Love. In fact, I heard it for the first time in an episode of Glee, and I didn't even know it was a Queen song. But the harmonies did sound very familiar, something akin to Bohemian Rhapsody. But, you know, Freddie Mercury, Brian May, Roger Taylor, uh, John Deacon, you know, these guys are just phenomenal. And, you know, Freddie, yeah, you, you were a master, sir. And I, I just love it. I love the music of Queen now. I am hooked. I've even got some Queen songs that I play on my Rock Band video game on my PS3. And yeah, you know, Queen is a great band. And I highly recommend that anyone who has never really listened to their stuff, listen to it. You will love it. You will not be disappointed. The music of Queen. Top 10 of 2010. That was number four. Number three, the Passion Pit concert I got to attend this month, December. I happen to be the kind of a person who, when he loves an artist, he tries very hard to see them in concert. In my entire life, the only other time this sort of thing has happened was with The Who. The year that I got heavily into The Who was the same year, 2006, that I got to see The Who live in concert in September of 2006. This year, I got into the music of Passion Pit off their album Manners back in about February of 2010. Got to see them live in concert December of 2010, and it was a great concert. Some videos of that and pictures are going to be posted soon enough. Just be patient with me. But um, I actually got to attend that with my good friend from meetup.com, uh, Lily, and we had a great time. We even got to see, as one of their opening acts, a band called Mr. Heavenly, who just happens to have, as their bass guitar player, none other than Michael Sarah, the actor from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Juno, Superbad, Arrested Development. Yeah, I got to see Michael Sarah. And I got video and pictures of them. It's, it's, it's incredible. That was an incredible night. I will never forget it. Passion Pit concert in Vegas at the House of Blues, Mandalay Bay. Number three favorite thing of the year. Number two, another concert experience that I'll never forget. Wang Chung at the pub at Monte Carlo. I have always loved the music of the 80s, but really what got me back into the music of the 80s was in the year 1997 after watching a show on VH1 called The Big 80s. It was basically a 30 minute program where some classic musicians of the 80s would introduce classic music videos of the 80s, and one of them one day was Everybody Have Fun Tonight by Wang Chung. I watched it, loved it, went out and went to a local music store back then called The Wall, which had just put out um, a brand new Greatest Hits album for Wang Chung. Uh, everybody Wang Chung tonight, their Greatest Hits. The CD cost about 15 bucks, and I only had about $12 cash on me, but I had a lot of coins. So I literally went outside the store, sat on a bench, and counted all the coins that I had, and I made sure that I had at least enough to pay for this CD. So I gathered up all my coins. <laughs> I, I went inside, and you know the guy rung me up. I think it was like 14.99. So I drop all this wad of uh, 
cash and then a huge pile of change. The guy just kind of looked at me and like, you're kidding me, right? And he says to me, I'm going to have to count this, you know. So I said, okay, I'll wait. Finally, he was like, come here. You're a dime short. So I was like, oh, man. So I had a nickel and five pennies. But I finally got that CD. And I think at that point, the guy was like, just get out of here. Get out of here, kid. Went home, listened to that CD nonstop. Loved it. And... I always wanted to see them live, and really, when I got to that concert and got to see them, it was a blast. I actually brought this album with me, Mosaic, which is from 1986. This is the album that has everybody have fun tonight, and uh, that's lead singer and guitarist Jack Hughes, and he autographed that to Phil, Las Vegas 2010 Jack Hughes, and then on the flip side, it is their, the bassist and backing vocalist, um, Nick Feldman, to Phil Nick Feldman. And when they performed their song, uh, Dance Hall Days, I believe it was, I held the album up in the air like that. And at the end of the song, Jack looked out at me, looked out at this picture, and he actually said to me, oh yeah, I'll remember that fellow. Everyone looked at me and it was like the spotlight came down and it was like everyone was amazed that I actually brought this album and then Nick just kind of went, hey mate, t -t 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 -t. I flipped it to his side. He was like, there you go, mate. That's the best side. But yeah, I mean, getting to meet Wang Chung afterwards, take pictures and video and tell them that you guys were responsible for getting me back into the 80s and they were very pleased to hear that. And... This is something I know I'll never forget, and it's, you know, that's just one of those things, you know, you hope one of these days that classic acts will never die and they'll eventually come to where you are, and it happened. Wang Chung at the Monte Carlo Pub venue. Oh, man, that was a great, great concert. I'll never forget it. Number two favorite thing about 2010, the Wang Chung concert. And finally, the number one thing that I love about 2010, and I'm going to actually guide you along with this one here. Getting a PlayStation 3 for the very first time. I had never owned a PS3, but I always wanted one, and now I have one. Very happy that I do. And, you know, I'm not much of a video gamer. What I really love is this, Rock Band. And I now own Rock Band 3, which has that keyboard, also can be used, you know, as a keytar. And the drums and the guitar, you know, I've got a new mic that I'm getting soon. But uh, not only do I love the PlayStation 3 for playing, you know, video games like Rock Band. You know, as you can see there, my collection, Ghostbusters, Rock Band 1, 2. You know, I have Rock Band 3 as well, and Beatles Rock Band, but I also have really gotten into Blu-ray. I've got, you know, two of my big box sets up here. I've got, you know, The Exorcist, both in the theatrical and the version you've never seen with the extra footage, the Back to the Future 25th Anniversary Trilogy, and, you know, the single disc collections I've got over here, you know, Full Metal Jacket, Get to the Greek, Get Smart, Ghostbusters, The Unrated Hangover, and Hot Tub Time Machine, Little Miss Sunshine Shorts, Short Circuit, and, of course, the very first Blu-ray I said I'd buy if I ever got um, a Blu-ray player, Young Frankenstein, a classic comedy that I just absolutely love. And, yeah, I mean, this thing has given me so much hours of enjoyment. I, I just, I absolutely love it. And, you know, really, that's really it. I mean, for 2010, so much happened, but, I mean, that's really what said it all for me. You know, the technology has come so far, year after year, and I'm sure there's going to be a PlayStation 4. But, I mean, for now, I enjoy the PlayStation 3 and the ability to watch Blu-ray movies. I have fun with it. I invite friends over. We rock out with Rock Band, watch some great movies and great quality on Blu-ray. That's really all I have to say. That's, that's it. That's my 2010, and it's, it's wonderful, and I'm so glad that you decided to watch this video and, you know, enjoy what I've said. I hope you've enjoyed it, and, um, yeah, all I can say is, you know, I welcome 2011 with open arms. You know, I've got a new job I'm going to be starting in radio again, reporting traffic. I've got, you know, new 
friends I'll be meeting, you know, new experiences. Now that I have an actual Saturday, Sunday weekend again, I'll be able to go out a lot more. Big things for 2011, I anticipate, you know? And, you know, before I close this, I just wanna put some shout outs out there to some people. You may have heard your names already in my last vlog about the top list, but uh, Paul Seavey, Elaine Connor, Rochelle, um, Adam, uh, Josh, Shane, you know, Tom Reese, Jeff Granstrom, the whole, the whole crew of Television City who, you know, I got to work with for almost two years. Uh, the people in Meetup that I love so much that I'm going to see tonight for a big New Year's Eve bash with Hair Nation and that I'm actually going to be DJing some of the night. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's all about fun, ladies and gentlemen. You know, that's all I can say. So, once again... You know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you all, and see you in 2011. Take care now.